Welcome to Basic MIDI Beacon Web UI Functionality. The purpose of this video is to provide an overview of the functions most commonly encountered by general users of MIDI Beacon. Section 1 UI Component Overview The first interface encountered by the user when connecting to MIDI Beacon is the login screen, where the user enters their username and password and clicks the login button. The MIDI Beacon Web UI is now displayed. The entirety of this interface is referred to as a workspace. This interface is split into several areas, the menu bar, the search bar, and the layout area. Many functionality components of the web UI are referred to as widgets. These are individual rearrangeable panels that have specific functionality, often interacting with or changing the state of other widgets. Widgets placed in the layout area may be displayed in several different ways, such as accordion style, individually collapsible, or integrated into the interface. Files managed by Media Beacon are referred to as assets. In the web UI, these are primarily displayed through a view widget, of which there are several types. Media Beacon 8.3 now has the ability to switch between different view widgets with the view selector. We will fully cover these view widgets later in this video, but here is a brief overview. Infinite Scroll allows assets to be viewed in a continuous scrolling window that automatically loads more assets when the currently loaded set's end is reached. Tile view is a traditional display of assets with pagination controls at the top. Text view shows assets and metadata to be displayed in a spreadsheet style interface. There are several variations to the basic workspace structure the user may encounter. Users may have access to multiple workspaces that contain different widgets and or different layouts. In Media Beacon 8.3, the workspace tabs are normally hidden, but when shown, they appear below the search bar. Clicking on a workspace tab will switch the browser to display that workspace. The menu bar and search bar may be hidden, and in this case the widgets normally docked there may be displayed in the layout area. Section 2. Current View and Asset Selections The web UI can display large numbers of images in its view widgets, and has methods of only showing so many assets at a given time, as seen previously with scrolling or pagination. To refer to the total set of assets that can be scrolled or paginated through, we use the term Current View. Any search or filtering criteria will be shown in the Search Status widget in the search bar. These criteria will change the list of assets shown in the current view. This list may be many thousands of assets, so there is a current view count shown here. When a search is performed, the assets that are returned will now populate the current view, and the count will reflect this. Many Media Beacon functions apply to an asset selection. An asset selection may be one or more assets and is represented in the UI with this highlighting. Making an asset selection in the web UI is similar to manipulating assets in an operating system's desktop. The user may select individual assets by clicking on the preview image and add assets to the selection by holding down the shift key and clicking on the preview image. Another way to make multiple asset selections is to use band select. Place the cursor in the margin between assets and click, hold, and drag. Shift clicking a currently selected asset will deselect it. The user may deselect all assets by clicking in the margin area between preview images. The web UI makes use of several keyboard commands for selection and deselection. Depending upon operating system, the user will press Command or Alt and A to select all. To deselect all, the user will press Command or Alt, Shift, and X. It's often important to know how many assets are in the asset selection. In MediaBeacon 8.3, the selection menu will show the current selection count. Section 3, Menu Bar Functionality. In this section, we'll discuss the functions and commands inside the menu bar, moving from left to right. When a user wishes to clear the current search criteria in the search status, they may click the Clear Search button. As a note, the Media Beacon logo may be replaced with another logo or icon. If a user has access to multiple workspaces, the Navigate menu will be shown, holding a list of available workspaces. Clicking on one of them will switch workspaces to the selected. In this case, we will return to the previous workspace by clicking on the Workspace tab. The Create menu contains commands that make new assets or other objects in the system. When there is no asset selection, only a few commands are shown. Many commands appear in menus when the user has made an asset selection. Adding an asset into Media Beacon is done with the Upload command. As stated previously, the term Asset refers to any file that is housed in and managed by Media Beacon. Files on a user's desktop remain referred to as files. The Upload command brings up the Upload dialog, allowing users to choose individual or multiple files to upload. 
The radio buttons below allow a choice of destination between two file system locations. The standard directory is a folder located directly under index that automatically makes subfolders for each user and further timestamp subfolders for each of that user's upload events. A quick note about the index folder. This is defined as the root or highest level folder that a given user is able to access. Regardless of this folder's real name on the Media Beacon server's file system, it will be displayed to the user as index. If the user chooses current directory, the file will be placed in the folder listed in the right-hand brackets. In this case, it is the index folder. The Don't Extract Files option prevents zip archives from being automatically decompressed when uploaded into Media Beacon. It isn't required to upload a pre-existing file in order to add a new asset. The Data Asset command creates a new data-only asset, which has no content other than metadata. The Selection command will create what's called a saved selection. These saved selections can be private, shared with the user's current group, or shared with specific users or user groups. There are additional functions and commands that pertain to saved selections that we'll discuss later in this video. Contact Sheet, traditionally called the PDF Catalog, will generate a PDF containing preview images of an asset selection as well as certain metadata. There are three basic types, Summary, Schema, and Detail, each with a different asset arrangement and information displayed. Here's an example of each. Bear in mind that when a contact sheet is created, it is not saved inside of Media Beacon. Instead, it's automatically generated and streamed to an individual user's browser. A user's browser will handle the PDF file as that individual browser is configured to do, usually being to display it as a new tab. If the user wishes to save this contact sheet, it must be done with the browser's controls. The Send External Link command allows users to designate an asset selection as a downloadable package that is available without having to log in to the system. The user may choose one or more recipients, designate an expiration date for the link, and a maximum number of times that selection can be downloaded. Next is an option to send a notification email to the originating user when the external link is used. Lastly, here is a text field which can be customized to display any given message on the download screen, displayed when the link is followed. The selection menu contains commands that manipulate the asset selection in some way. Again, the full list of commands is not listed unless a selection has been made. Bulk Edit allows the user to edit the metadata of all assets in an asset selection. This can be done to one or more fields at once. Clicking Write Metadata will display a confirmation dialog, and upon confirmation the specified metadata is written. We'll cover more on this function and metadata in general later in this video. Download allows users to retrieve assets from the system. Depending upon the user's installation, the following two tabs may or may not be displayed. The Custom Conversion tab allows the user to choose from an array of different file types and options. By default, the Remove Directory Hierarchy toggle is checked. If unchecked, this will download the file in a zip archive that will contain a folder structure that recapitulates the folder structure of the Media Beacon file system, up to the user's index folder. Download on conversion completion is also on by default to allow the user to work asynchronously while downloads are processing. Another option is to notify the user by email when processing is complete. This is useful if the conversion concerned is a very large file or time consuming. The Conversion Presets tab, shown here with the default configuration, allows the user to choose preset conversion profiles. Typically, users will have access to a handful of conversions along with the No Change option which downloads assets in their original form with no conversions. Note that the same conversion is applied to the entire asset selection. The Notification Center pop-up will be displayed when conversions or other background processes are in progress. This replaces the Loading Dock Workspace or widget as seen in previous versions of Media Beacon. As we can see, this asset is automatically downloaded once the conversion is finished. However, it remains in the Notification Center for re-download until the Delete Conversion button is clicked. The Email Conversion button will email the contents of the current conversion set as an attachment. Keep in mind that Media Beacon has a maximum of 10 megabytes per email for attachments. A note on conversions and metadata. Any metadata that is to be included in a downloaded file must be added before the asset is converted. Move Copy will move or copy a selection of assets to a different directory in the file system. Keep in mind the web UI has a one-to-one -one relationship with the server's file system. With only a few exceptions, what's seen in the directory browser is what's present on disk. The delete command is used to remove files from the system. 
Deletion is permanent, so users should take care with what's removed. Link Assets creates an association between assets in a selection. We will see more about how this association works later in this video. The email command is similar to the email function in the notification panel. However, assets in the selection are not made attachments by default. Unless the Attach the Assets toggle is checked, links will be added to the body of the message, one links for each. Following these links will open a browser window showing a given asset. The Pre-populate text toggle will add or remove the asset URLs from the body of the message. The Select All command performs the same action as previously mentioned. The Load command will recall a saved selection, changing the current view to the saved selection's contents. When this is done, the saved selection name becomes a search criteria. The Add command will append an asset selection to the contents of the chosen saved selection. Once done, the saved selection's preview icons and selection count will be updated. When the current view contains a saved selection and an asset selection has been made, the Remove command becomes available. This will remove the asset selection from the save selection. The Add to Basket command adds the asset selection to the Scratch Basket, which we'll talk about next. In MediaBeacon 8.3, the Scratch Basket has been redesigned to function within the View widget rather than being a separate widget. The new Scratch Basket function is similar to a save selection, but one that is quicker to access. Once an asset selection has been added to the Scratch Basket, the Basket icon in the menu bar highlights and shows the count of assets within. The Scratch Basket contents can be viewed by clicking the Basket icon. This adds a special search criteria to search status. The contents of the Scratch Basket can be cleared by clicking the X icon to the right of the Scratch Basket count indicator. As with the Remove command used with Save Selections, a subset of assets may be removed from the basket with the Remove from Basket command. This command is only visible when the current view is showing a Scratch Basket and an asset selection is made. This is the ACL menu. ACL stands for Access Control List, which is a system for specifying which assets users have access to, as well as what functions they are allowed to use. Usually, ACLs are roughly analogous to business groups or task-oriented subsets within those groups. There may be very different sets of capabilities, asset accessibility, and presentations of the interface between ACLs. The Contact Information button allows the user to access and change their own contact information. If MediaBeacon is configured to work with an organization's central authentication system, no changes will be possible due to the authentication system control of these entries. Lastly, in the menu bar, we have the Logout button, which logs the user out of the system, redirecting the browser to the login page. If a central authentication system is in use, the browser may redirect to a page defined by that system. Section 4 View Widget Functionality the Asset View is a dialog box that displays metadata and other details about a specific asset. It can be displayed by double-clicking on an asset's preview image or by pressing the space bar. If multiple assets are selected, the top leftmost asset in the selection will be displayed. On the left-hand side is the high-res preview, an automatically resizing asset preview. Of note, an asset will not have this larger size preview the first time the asset is viewed here and will begin generating a larger preview on demand, which subsequently stays with the asset. The Metaforms tab panel is on the right. The metadata panel itself shows a list of what's referred to in MediaBeacon as metaforms. These can display predefined lists of metadata fields or specialized interfaces used to display different types of information. On the far right, we see the Asset View command buttons. They are Reveal Metadata, Quick Download, Add to Basket, and Share External Link. Reveal Metadata toggles the visibility of the Metadata tabs panel. The remaining three buttons perform their action only upon the asset shown in the view. We've already covered the Add to Basket command, and we'll cover the other functions later in this video. On either side of the dialog, we see the Asset View pagination buttons that let the user page right and left to assets that are next or previous in the current sort order of the current view. Moving on, let's talk about some of the Metaform tabs that users may encounter here. The General tab is a special function Metaform and shows some basic information about a given asset. The Asset ID, sometimes referred to as Record ID, is a unique number for each asset in MediaBeacon. Even if several copies of the same picture were uploaded, each is an individual copy and would have a unique Asset ID. On the right-hand side, we see the file size on disk. Below that, a star rating. This operates much as other similar rating interfaces, the total being derived from the votes of all who have rated. 
The Colors section shows the top five colors present in an image as determined by an automatic histogram generated for every asset when it's uploaded. The Find Like Assets button will search for other assets with a similar color histogram. If a user clicks on one of the color tiles, just that one color will be added as a search criteria. The Path field shows the file path to the asset from the user's current ACL index folder. A useful function of the path field is that each folder name is clickable and will filter the current view to show assets inside that folder. Keywords displays the Dublin Core keywords present for this asset. As an example of a more typical metaform, we'll look at Media Beacon's predefined metaform for the Dublin Core schema. Empty fields may not show initially, so click the Show Empty Fields toggle. To enter data in a field, click inside it and enter the text. We will cover more about field types and metadata values later in this video. The Discussions tab is a special function metaform which allows users to attach comments and annotations to assets. The parenthetical number next to Discussion shows the total comment count. A comment is text attached to a given asset written by a given user. An annotation, on the other hand, is associated with the surround box in the image preview. Create an annotation by dragging out a surround box and then entering text pertaining to that region. Hovering over an annotation in the Discussions tab will highlight it on the preview. We will return later in this video to discuss other special function metaforms. Contextual menus are a major part of the web UI. If a user's ACL has the privilege to see them, they provide access to a lot of additional functionality. For now, we will focus on how contextual menus are used within the view widgets. In a view widget, right-clicking on an asset's preview image will bring up that contextual menu. If multiple assets are selected upon right-click, a selection submenu is displayed within the contextual menu. As we can see here, this is a recapitulation of everything that's inside of the selection menu. Let's have a look at the new commands in this new menu. Open a new window will open a new browser tab, filter the current view to only show the selected asset, and automatically open the asset view for it. Copy link to asset will copy a link to the currently selected asset. This is similar to the email links. Quick download will download an asset selection, bypassing any conversions. We'll skip Download, Selection, and Add to Basket, as they have already been covered. View Original will display assets that can be displayed in a browser in a new tab at their full size. The Replace command replaces an asset with a file chosen by the user. Unlike Upload, this does not create a new asset. It will just replace the data part of an asset with a new file, leaving all of the metadata from the original asset intact. We'll use the example of adding an image file to a data-only asset. On the original, we'll add some metadata that we'll want to retain through the Replace action. In the Replace Asset dialog, we have one option, which is to replace the asset's name. This is usually desirable if the data asset is being used as a placeholder for that metadata that's waiting for the full file to be uploaded. Crop is a form of download conversion, sending a cropped version of an asset to the Notification Center. We can see here the coordinates of the crop. Email has already been covered. Checkout and New Version are similar commands, but Checkout is distinctly different because it will lock an asset from being modified until Check Back In. Being checked out prevents file system changes, metadata changes, or download. When an asset is checked out, it is automatically downloaded in a special way. The checked out file will have the string Working Copy appended to its name. It is important not to change this name, as it's expected by the check-in process. Once edits have been completed and the file has been saved, we return to the web UI and choose Check In from the Checked Out Assets contextual menu. Once the new image file has been uploaded, the checkout status is cancelled and the asset can be manipulated by other users. A user may also cancel checkout to return the asset to normal status with no changes. An asset that has had checkout or new version used on it will have one or more managed versions. The Managed Versions Metaform tab shows previous versions of that asset. These previous versions are not deleted from Media Beacon and are not found in a normal search. A previous version can be shown in the current view by clicking the Show in View Widget button. Back in the Manage Versions tab, we can click on the previous version and see a number of options. The first is to quick download the previous version. Next, users may compare, which displays a side-by-side -side comparison between the current and just clicked version. A difference image shows where pixels have been changed. The last option is Promote the current version. This makes the current and previous versions swap places. New version is similar to the second part of the checkout check-in process. This allows any given file to be uploaded as the current version of an asset. No locking of the to-be-replaced version occurs. 
The new version dialog has a few extra options because this version isn't enforced to be a copy of the original. A user may replace asset's name and replace asset's metadata. The latter option may be preferable if there is metadata resident in the new version, which should overwrite the original version's metadata. The Views command is named ambiguously, but has a very specific and distinct function from View Pages, View Widgets, View Assets, or other similarly named concepts. It allows a user to change how an asset is displayed in View Widgets. Each asset has three differently sized previews. Each of these is used in different parts of the web UI, so it makes sense to update all of them. Before we move on, there are a few additional contextual menu commands that only show up for certain asset types or in special circumstances. The pinpoint text command is shown when a quick search is performed. Clicking will reveal a preview of what text was found to include the asset in the results set. Some file types such as PDF, InDesign, Illustrator, and PowerPoint may contain multiple pages. Those which do will have the view pages command available. This will open the View Pages dialog, which shows a scrollable list of thumbnails on the right and a large preview of each page on the left, which is also scrollable. PDF files, being a browser-readable format, may be opened in the browser directly with the Open PDF command. Next, we're going to focus on the differences between the View widgets, discussing the unique features of each. The Infinite Scroll widget's assets will display additional information when hovered over, a file named Bezel, and if available, a conversion menu. The Conversions pull-down will show a list of conversions that can be performed on the hovered asset. In this case, we have No Change, which is the same as Quick Download, Web PNG, and Web JPEG. When one of these conversions is initiated, it will automatically download without waiting in the Notification panel. If the user has the privileges to do so, the file name of an asset may be changed by clicking on the file name bezel and entering a new string. Keep in mind that any changes to the file name here will change the file name on the server's file system. Tile View's display of assets places them into a discrete tiled arrangement. This makes band selecting somewhat easier, but keep in mind that to do any sort of asset selection requires interaction with the asset preview, not the asset tile. Pagination controls allow the user to move through the full set of assets by clicking rather than scrolling, and allows the user to immediately jump to a specific page of assets by entering a page into the page selector. Preview size may be controlled with the preview size slider. Changing the preview size will decrease or increase the number of pages needed to display all assets. When using the tile view, the total file size of the asset selection is displayed. One function the tile view has over infinite scroll is the ability to toggle folder transparency. When a directory is selected, the transparency toggle icon will appear. When the icon has a light fill, the current view will show assets from within all subfolders of the selected folder. When this button is clicked, the icon changes to a shaded fill indicating that subfolders and their contents are being hidden in the current view. As we can see, this asset is visible because it is resident directly under index slash images. When an individual asset is selected, a shaded area known as the badge frame will be displayed. Its two main functions are to act as a target for asset view and to hold asset specific commands. The badge frame can be moved from the initial asset selected using the arrow keys up, down, and left, right. Note that when the badge frame has been moved off the initial asset, that asset is shown to be selected. When the user presses the spacebar, the framed asset is displayed in asset view. The user may use the up, down, left, right arrow keys to select different assets while still remaining within asset view. Commands in the badge frame are a subset of menu commands and other contextual features. We can see quick download, discussion, view pages, pinpoint text, and find like assets. The badge frame may also toggle hiding of the icon's titles by clicking on the unfilled space below the listed commands. Asset highlights and custom badge icons are additional display options for view widgets. The infinite scroll and tile view can have both of these indicators configured, but text view can only have a highlight. These elements are displayed when an asset is tagged with a particular piece or pieces of metadata that match a save search that's been used to define that particular highlight. Highlights and badges can be independently assigned to different metadata. Text view allows assets to be displayed in a spreadsheet format, making use of the sorting filters which all view widgets share. We'll talk more about these filters later in this video. Before we cover in-depth functionality descriptions, let's cover one last commonly encountered widget. The Places browser is a multifunctional widget that displays an admin-definable list of specific commands for quick access. Some of the different types of commands or places that users may encounter are navigate to an ACL, navigate to a directory, load a save search or selection, navigate to a workspace, 
or execute arbitrary JavaScript. With this last place type, users can take advantage of Media Beacon's client side API. More about how to use the API is available in our API training course. To explain several sets of intertwined widget functionality, the next few sections are split up into broad task categories. Section 5 Search and Filter Functionality. As we have seen in this video, text string searches are done with a widget at the top left of the workspace called the Quick Search widget. Users may click the magnifying glass icon or press the return key to submit a search. Searches performed here add search criteria to the search status widget on the right. Quick Search adds two distinct search criteria for each search submitted. The first searches for the entered string and asset file names, and the second performs a general search inside all aspects of a file. This file contains search criteria will look for the string in all metadata fields and within the text content of certain file types, such as PDF and InDesign documents. By default, Quick Search will add criteria to the current search whenever a search is submitted. Some users may prefer an alternate configuration, which will clear the search on each submission. If a user wishes to perform a search upon a specific set of metadata fields rather than all parts of a file, they can use Advanced Search, accessible by clicking the ellipsis icon to the right of Quick Search. In the Advanced Search dialog, the user must designate one or more fields to search on. The text field here will automatically filter to help narrow field choices. After the field is chosen, enter a search string on the right, submitting the search by clicking Search in the bottom right. The Advanced Search dialog also allows users to save a search. Instead of clicking Search, click the Save button. The Save Search dialog prompts the user to enter a name and description for the saved search, and to choose the level of sharing. With the Private setting, no one except the originating user and global administrators will be able to see the search. If Current Group is selected, it will be shared with the users of the current group, when Share with Specific Users and Groups is chosen, the user may pick and choose specifically who will get to see the saved search. A saved search may be recalled in the search dialog. Click the title of the saved search to immediately submit the search, or press the up arrow icon to load it into the left-hand fields for inspection or modification. In MediaBeacon 8.3, Quick Search and Search Status have been given their own special docking area on each workspace by default, the search bar. These widgets can be displayed elsewhere on a workspace. If the Search Status widget is not in the search bar, a Home button will be shown in Search Status. This is an alternate Clear Search button. The Search Filter widget contains a crossed indexed list of all the values of all shown fields. To the right of each value is a count of assets in the current view that match the term. When a value is clicked, it becomes a search criteria and filters the current view. In the search filter, values not present in the new current view will be hidden and value counts are updated. Search filter criteria may be cleared by clicking the X icon next to that criteria in the search status widget or within the search filter itself. Values from different fields can be combined into one converging search. Shift clicking a value adds it as a negative search criteria, meaning the search results will not contain that given value. When a value is selected, the AND OR indicator is displayed to the left of the field name. When clicked, this changes to OR, allowing multiple values present in a given field to be added as search criteria. Positive and negative criteria from the same or different fields may combine in this way. All selected values in a given field may be cleared at the same time using the X icon next to the field name. The default number of values displayed under a field is 5, but when there are more, the More button will be shown. When clicked, it expands that particular field subsection to allow viewing of up to 256 values, as well as adding a list filter field. Entering text here will filter the values in the expanded list. Keep in mind, this filter is not a search, and only returns values below that begin with the entered string. Saved searches may be viewed and retrieved from the Saved Searches widget. The directory browser is a display of the folders that the user has access to. The contextual menu for this widget has some unique items that pertain specifically to folders. Most of these items are straightforward in their functions, however it's worth noting that the download and share external link do apply their commands to a folder's entire contents. Also in this case, download acts as a quick download, skipping any conversions. Folders in the directory browser may be used as drag and drop upload targets, meaning that when a file from the desktop is dragged to a specific folder, it will be uploaded directly to that folder. The directory browser may also be configured with a list filter field, which operates the same way as it does for saved searches or selections. As we look at different ways to search and filter, there is another related functionality we have not yet discussed, sorting. View widgets have filtering headers above the assets, 
and these have the dual purpose of filtering and or sorting the current view. Note that using these filtering options does add search criteria. String fields like file name can be sorted in ascending or descending order. They show a list of values in the current view by frequency. If the More button is clicked, the list expands to the top 100 values and may be scrolled through. The file size filter is specially set up to filter by predefined size ranges. Date fields have similar date related predefined ranges and also allow the user to filter on arbitrary ranges. Multi-value fields sort and filter in the same way as string fields. In order to clear the sorting used by the headers, refresh the browser page. We will cover more about field types in the next section. Section 6, Viewing and Editing Metadata. We'll start by coming back to a concept we introduced earlier. Asset links are viewed in the Asset Links Metaform. This shows all other links in a given link set. Clicking the Show in View widget button will open a new browser window showing only this particular asset. It's worth noting that while asset links are useful for keeping groups of assets associated, these links are not searchable and for this reason it is much preferable to use keywords or other forms of searchable metadata. The Automatic Versions Metaform tab is a way of visualizing information that Adobe products add to files that are processed and saved with those tools. If one of those applications modifies a file and it's saved as copy or using the save as command from the original asset, ID numbers are stamped into the asset identifying the lineage of parent-child relationships. Here we can see that this asset is parent to the assets on the right. The Video Transcodes Metaform tab allows the user to download either the original format of a video asset or the preview transcode version automatically made by the system. Editing metadata is primarily done using Metaforms, whether in the asset view or bulk edit. There are several field types which we will describe here. String fields are the most basic type, containing one string per field per asset. Date fields are similar, but in MediaBeacon, the value that's entered needs to comply with the ISO 8601 short format date, which is year, month, and date. Users may either enter the information by hand or click the date picker on the left. The icon on the far left will enter today's date. Dictionary fields will only allow values in a predetermined list. These fields are indicated by the circle I icon on their right. Clicking it displays the dictionary field values the user may choose from. Entering text into a dictionary field is similar to a list filter field. It will narrow the number of items to choose from, but with one important difference. This filter will search for substrings anywhere in the list's values. Another method of choosing values in a dictionary field is to enter some characters contained within the value desired, at which point the pull-down menu will be showed and pre-filter. Then, use the arrow keys to select the desired item and press return to enter the value into the field. A specialized form of dictionary is the hierarchical dictionary. Values available in these fields are intrinsically part of subsets and are supersets in their respective categories. A text area field is used to house longer strings and also text that contains carriage returns. The suggest dictionary fields use controlled vocabulary as a list of suggestions. The user may choose from this list or enter their own terms. Note that these terms are not automatically added to the dictionary. Most field types may be configured as multi-value fields, sometimes called comma-separated fields. A good example of a multi-value string field is Dublin Core keywords, here each word becoming its own subvalue. Entering text as individual subvalues is done by pressing the comma key between words. It is possible to enter values that contain spaces and even possible to enter values that have commas in them. Enter backslash then comma to properly escape it. Dictionary fields can also be multi-value fields, which will specify or suggest values from the predefined vocabulary. Some field types will prevent invalid data from being saved. In this case of dictionary fields, it's any value not in the predefined vocabulary. If such a value is entered, the field will highlight in red and an error message will display at the bottom of the metaform. Once editing is completed, we can see that fields in the search filter are now populated with the values that have just been entered. The string field display is fairly straightforward, with one list entry per value. Date fields can display a number of dynamic ranges, so assets may fall into one or more of these categories. Users may also specify their own ranges. Hierarchical dictionary fields are particularly useful in the search filter as each level of the hierarchy is represented. Clicking Literature will search for any asset that has the subvalue Literature anywhere within this hierarchical value. The Text View widget allows data to be entered in a spreadsheet style interface. The user may change or enter a new value into the field, but changes will not be saved until the Save button is clicked. Fields that will be updated by the Save action are marked with a red indicator. 
As a note, be aware of fields that require correct data types. If, for example, a dictionary field is filled with a non-dictionary term, it will invalidate the entire metadata update. The search filter has a secondary use, which is to enter metadata. Drag and drop an asset selection over a value to write that metadata into the assets. Be aware that for single value fields, this will overwrite the previous value. Previously, we explored the bulk edit command. The Metaform Stamper is an extension of that functionality, analogous to a saved bulk edit preset. This top stamper allows the user to write metadata on two fields simultaneously, and the Metaform below will remove the value Collection1 from a multi-valued field. Keep in mind that although stampers are drag-and-drop targets, it is not necessary to drag-and-drop to use them. Instead, make an asset selection and click the stamper desired and the metadata will be applied. Section 7 Adding Assets Efficiently Earlier in this video, we discussed how to upload a file with both the Upload Menu command and by dragging and dropping from the desktop to the directory browser. If configured, users may also upload by dragging onto the View widget. The difference is that users cannot choose which directory the files are uploaded to. It will be either the standard upload folder or a specific predefined folder. There is a special option that must be enabled by an administrator that sets the TileView's upload directory to whichever directory is chosen in the directory browser. If a user does not have access to the directory browser and regularly needs to upload to a specific folder, using the Upload HTML widget may be a good option. In this case, we have two of them configured. One will always upload to Index, WIP, New Assets. The other will upload using an Upload Metaform. Uploading with a Metaform is a way to encourage and ensure that users enter metadata at the time of upload. In this instance, once the upload begins, a Metaform is presented prompting the user to supply metadata for all assets in that upload. Metaform fields may be configured to require values to be entered in them in order for the files to be uploaded. In this example, origin and long description have required value listed, letting users know that these fields must be filled in. If these are not entered when the Submit button is pressed, the field will highlight with a red border. Section 8, Special Functions for Layout File Types. In this section, we'll discuss MediaBeacon's special functions for layout file types. For InDesign and Illustrator files, the View Pages dialog displays additional information called the Document Report. This will show ink color specified and fonts used in the document, but most crucially, a list of the assets placed in the layout file. A preview of each page is shown when that asset is resident in the system. Multi-page documents also allow a discussion for each page. Association of placed images within the layout file is automatic if MediaBeacon is configured to do so. Upload of placed assets and the layout file does not need to happen at the same time. If a layout is uploaded before its placed images are, when the placed images are uploaded, they'll be automatically associated, and the same for the converse case. In the document report, each placed asset may be opened in a new window, or by clicking Select All, all placed assets shown become the current view. This latter function allows the user to quickly collect and download all the image resources used in a layout. If we wish to know what layout assets a given image is used in, the Used in Assets Metaform will list them. Double-clicking the preview here will open the asset view for that layout in a new window. Thank you for watching this presentation on basic MediaBeacon web UI functionality.